je veux garder quelque chose de national, mmh. euh, je pense que le, on est ce qu'on d'où on vient. Donc euh, moi je tout 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 ces toutes ces comment je veux dire de, 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 de tourner Bruxelles à, au Luxembourg. Moi ça me pose pas trop de problèmes parce que c'est ça fait partie du cinéma. Donc euh, ça ça me pose pas la fiction. Moi j'aime bien faire de la fiction donc ça me pose pas trop de problèmes. Par contre je pense qu'à travers moi, ma belgitude passera de toute façon. So as far as the question about uh, keeping your cultural identity when you make a film and how important that is to you, um, I think that you are where you come from. You can't help it. So uh, to me, to shoot the, the scenes in Luxembourg instead of Brussels is not that was not that important because that's part of the game, part of cinema. And I like fiction, so it's it's okay. And I think that my um, Belgian identity will will pass anyway. I mean, you, you can't help it. You you will have seen it anyway. As I told you before, I'm coming from Greece, so <laughs> <laughs> with, without co-production, would be yeah. impossible to do the film uh, if you want to pay the people. If you don't pay the people, yeah. Um, on the other hand. Um, Uh, yes. I, I believe I, I, I'm doing films about uh, the things I know very good and uh, my first film I did in, in Berlin and I was living there so I did a film about foreigners in Berlin because I was a foreigner there and that was what I knew very good. Mm -hmm. The second film I did in Greece and I, I did a film about a Greek person because this is the thing I know uh, better there. Uh, so there is no s particular need of me to be uh, uh, international polyglot or whatever. It's, it's the situation I am in mm -hmm. each time who dictates what kind of film But will would be. you migrate to the money, you know, um, I if, you, if you had to? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a collaboration um, work-wise with Turkey, Germany and Turkey, but our film was financed um, in Germany and, and only with German money, and we've been very, very, very fortunate. And in fact, I would like to welcome Andreas Schreitmüller from Arte, who also co-produced our film. Hi, Andreas. <laughs> Great to hear you. Um, And, and I just, I, I thought it was very, it was extremely <laughs> nourishing to work with a very multicultural team coming from a great deal of countries, mm -hmm. um, especially Turkey, Germany, Austria. Mm -hmm. But it's been also a very fortunate situation uh, in referring to what you said about, you know, all those difficult issues you have to address. If you're co-producing with a lot of countries, you obviously have to bend to reality, which means shooting someplace else, which, you know, the whole schedule, let's depend on it. But I think in general, we are so fortunate in Europe overall. We are so lucky that we are, s we are able, if it's a co-production or not, to make those kinds of films, whether they're auteur films mm. or not. If, if you, we want Tribeca with our film and it's great to be in America and it's wonderful to see the studio system, mm -hmm. but it's just amazingly wonderful to be able to make films in Europe um, because it's a great deal of freedom. But has anybody here amongst the panelists <laughs> sorry uh, keep any, making uh, loads of them any of european uh, um, money <laughs> uh, either of you three I, i doubt it actually but i know cases where this happens but, uh, where you've had to to change the location specifically because you can get some money has that happened to you i mean uh, i mean the location not not the actual um uh not the not the not where you shot it but the actual location In the story, you know that you might have written a script set in uh, uh, in Portugal, and suddenly you've got to make it in Sweden. You know, uh, I, I know of instances where the screenplay gets changed in this way. But no way. No way. Good. No way. Story is the story. The story happens yeah. where it yeah. should happen. Yeah. In our selection, we had a wonderful Belgian movie, mm -hmm. Satin, in Mururoa in Polynesia, mm -hmm. and I discovered when really after I selected the movie, that it was shot in Maddalena, Sardinia. <laughs> <laughs> There is, um, and this is not my opinion, I am personally, although I'm not a f professional filmmaker, I'm a fan of co-production, but for example, especially in uh, Luxembourg, where there are quite a few pe uh, films which are co-produced because 
it seems that it's a pretty good, it's, it's like a no-brainer to produce a film in Luxembourg. It seems to be a pretty good deal. There is among the population um, a slight feeling of dislike for um, these co-productions just because most of the films, n even though they are filmed in Luxembourg, they are most of them are not set there. And so for many of the... Um, I hate the expression, but for many of the ordinary people, it, it basically basically feels like people wanting to um, to make a film and take our money, which so far has um, never been a concern because we've had enough of, of that, but which is becoming a concern more and more the money gets tight and um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I really would love to would like sorry to know about the um, the meaning real meaning of. Uh, Cultural exception. This, mm -hmm. uh, I think, the, it, this is a good translation. Yeah. Uh, so the way, because I know uh, American industry tries to avoid this. Uh, uh, before it was a right, now it's a, an ex exception. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to keep. We uh, sorry. We can keep with this uh, right. I think it's not a, an, an ex exception, but a right. Uh, we can keep it for years in, in Europe, in the European Union. The exception, <laughs> it is a right, <laughs> so to say. The exception means that uh, we have a UNESCO convention which gives us the right and the possibility to, to behave vis-a-vis -vis film and cultural objectives, not in the way of trade. The rules of trade are not applicable to cultural objectives, which means we can support cinema, we can give national money to cinema, we can give European money to cinema. So it means it, it has been done in the UNESCO, uh, via the UNESCO, because uh, we have, uh, uh, how to say, world trade uh, legislation, and we should, we, sh we, we had to convince that cultural products should have a special place everywhere and should have this exception, the so cultural and audiovisual exception. So this is what we did worldwide. But the problem is that um, in the European Union, we had the impression in the Cultural Committee that this uh, exception was really only seen worldwide but not inside the European Union. Now we are trying to convince the competition uh, commissioner to accept that this, <laughs> that this exception has also to play a role in the European Union. And therefore, we have to tackle a lot, and we have new, a new commissioner uh, uh, in this field. Uh, she has no idea of this before, and she had to learn when she became our commissioner in this field. So I think this is... We are very happy to have this, to have the po we have had the possibility as uh, 27 countries to, to, to be together to, to, to have this exception, which is the right to finance, especially beside the, uh, despite the fact that there are trade uh, legislation. But we have also in our committee uh, some colleagues who are not so much in favor of this exception. I have a Portuguese colleague who's totally against he himself is a very famous writer in Portugal, but nevertheless, he doesn't want this exception. So we had to, to fight inside the European Union to keep to our promises in the UNESCO Convention.